Hello, world travelers. Let's forge a sword. I couldn't get my hands on any 5 16th inch thick 5160, which was my first choice in steel, so I had to settle for a thicker section of 1070. You can witness the dismay when I figure out that 3 8 inch bar steel might be too thick and heavy. Remember, I don't have a power hammer or a press, and it's going to have to be cut to length to confirm my suspicions, but this is probably too heavy. Well, that means I'll either have to cut it even shorter and then draw it out by hand, which feels like a bit of an unnecessary challenge for my first sword, or I can grind it down to a more usable thickness. 5 16 cents will give me some wiggle room, and it shouldn't be too unwieldy for hand hammering. At least, that's my theory. So let's light this candle. Per use, the tip is pointed first. In this video, you're going to see every hammer strike. I haven't cut anything out. It sped up about three and a half times and there's still about 19 minutes of hammering which is over an hour of real-time striking. That makes this video super long and uh, frankly I don't have that much to say. <laughs> so uh, people don't seem to like the addition of music to some of these. Um, that means there's just going to be a lot of tink tink tink. Ewart Oakshot was a 20th century historian who created a system of classifying medieval swords based on their shapes and certain characteristics. I don't want to show that scheme for copyright reasons, but it's really super cool. You should go online and search it. There's about 22 varieties of swords, and most of those have their own subcategories. Uh, as I start forging, I'm aiming for something in the 18A realm that will have a final weight around 2 and 3 quarters pounds and a blade of 31 inches. At least, that's the theory. That's where I'm trying to head. Frankly, it'll be a miracle if I can pull that off, <laughs> but we'll see. All right, the point is coming along and now I have to taper it. So you see me work on drawing out the steel lengthwise while trying to make it narrower. The horn of the anvil seems like a good place to do that. This is my first sword, aside from watching some YouTube videos. I don't have any real knowledge on how to do this. So it's one giant experiment in pseudoscience. Hey, you're invited to ride along. It's one fantastic voyage. We're just going to glide, slide, slippity slide, a lakeside stank, you know. As you can see, I'm working the taper further down the blade towards the hilt. All right, predictions. So there's a lot of challenges here, but I have two main concerns, and they're pretty big. The first is symmetry. Will I be able to maintain uniform thickness and hammer out something that's symmetrical and then grind it. I've, I've done a lot of grinding single uh, edges where you grind two bevels, but this has four bevels, you know, two edges. 
And they just have to line up with one another from side to side, right? And the bevels uh, themselves have to meet in a straight line down the middle of the sword on two sides. And the sword's a pretty unwieldy thing to grind. The next issue is heat treating. At the time of narrating this video, I haven't done that yet, so I don't know what's going to happen there. Um, but it's probably my biggest concern. 1070 steel isn't that difficult to heat treat in and of itself, but swords are notorious for doing crazy things like warping and cracking. I've spent hours working out warps on much smaller blades. So this could be a huge issue and possibly a point of critical failure. The total length here is going to be a scooch over 33 inches right now. I think I need a little more length to meet my 31 inch blade goal. So it's time to taper the thickness of the blade towards the tip and we'll see how much length we gather. I'm having to move the blade further and further into the forge to heat the middle and the base. So as I'm working my way down, it's time to turn the sword around and hold it by the tip while hammering. It doesn't look like a lot's happening here, but it is actually getting wider and with that a little bit longer. It's just really slow. Now, when we remeasure, we're just over 34 inches. We gained about an inch, so that's pretty cool. Next, we'll put it in a fuller that my friend lent me, and we'll isolate a tang right about 31 inches. So instead of working it in the fuller another heat or two, I get a little bit ahead of myself and start hammering on the anvil edge. It's a little bit too soon in my case. So a few errant hammer strikes later and I'm uh, 
chasing my tail. This is going to end up costing me some length in the long run, unfortunately. Right there, that's where it happened. I feel like I'm better at isolating tangs than I've demonstrated in the last few videos. It's really sort of frustrating, but you know, that happens, I guess. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe I'm just not as good. Maybe I just suck. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's the problem. At this point, I'm not real clear on the handle and how I'm going to attach a pommel and stuff like that, so I want to give myself some extra room. As you can see, I've done some grinding there along the uh, uh, tang where it meets the blade to sort of correct those issues from the hammer. I didn't measure it, but I think the blade's down to about 30 inches. All right, let's crack on those bevels. Looks like people start bevels at the base of the sword, and that makes sense. So, blap, blap. If you notice, the sword's being uh, held at a slight angle. It's tilted up on the anvil face in an attempt to keep the bevel centered along its length, basically. I'm not as careful about this on knives, because if the edge is not centered in that case, it's relatively simple to correct it either on the anvil or in a vise, or, you know, if it's minor enough, even with grinding. That's just not the case with the sword, so trying to keep the edge centered from the start seems like best practices to me. Slowly working our way towards the tip. Thank you. 
What you'll notice is that as we move towards the tip and the blade is a little bit thinner, uh, it curves even more dramatically as we hammer one side and not the other. And returning the blade to straight by hammering the opposite side turns out to be a relatively good indicator of symmetry. Relatively. So when I see these areas that are still curved, I just go in and adjust the bevel on the, on the opposite side there and sort of push it back. It's pretty cool. I'm jinxing myself to say this and watch it blow apart in the heat treatment, but hammering the bevels was not as difficult as I imagined. I have to go back here for a second run to thin it out a little bit, and I'm going to have to do some tuning up, but uh, basically this wasn't the chore that I thought it would be. We just slowly work our way back up, drawing out the blade a little more. And remember, we're, we're forging thick, right? I want to have plenty of room to mess up uh, grinding and be able to correct any errors with heat treatment and things like that. So going into heat treatment, this sword is still going to be pretty heavy. At least I think it will be. We'll see how the grinding goes, but that's the plan, to have some extra meat to work with. God. Oh man. I'm going to catch it in the comment section. <laughs> uh, I just said that, didn't I? And you'll notice there's still a flat top. I haven't hammered the bevels to meet in the middle yet. We can do that with grinding, and that's my preference. I think, again, we just have more room to work with and extra material there. And that'll be the plan, because, again, that is the sort of the one of the characteristics for this category that I'm trying to fit into, is that the bevels do form a diamond shape. They do meet in the middle. But I'm not going to bother trying to hammer that out. We're just going to do that on the grinder if I can. One can see the blade is twisted towards the tip, and hammering partially corrects this, but not fully. So eventually we're going to throw this in the vise and remove that twist. In the meantime, it's just going to have to drive you crazy like it drove me crazy.
I'm working my way up the sword from the base to the tip, straightening it in the vise, hammering out some dings and bends and stuff as I go. Trying to achieve some uniform thickness along the edge. If that twist has been bothering you as much as it has been bothering me, you're going to love this part. Just clamp it up. And we're done. That was easy. Pretty cool. A few more pitter patters and we're going to call this done. It's been a blast, guys. It's a bit of an experiment. I know it's a long video, but I also think it's a little bit unique and uh, maybe you appreciate that. And again, I don't know what the future holds for this thing, but we'll see. Next time we're going to grind this and heat treat it, so stay tuned. <laughs>